So we get a lot of questions about will like blank router work? And the answer is almost always yes, but some routers are probably going to be more enjoyable to use than others. Uh, so I'm going to walk you through some of the features I like about this router, um, some of the other tools that I have that could work, and then we're going to go to the hardware store and walk you through the routers they have there and some of the features that we like and some of the things that we'd like to avoid. So this is the Rigid R2200. This is the router we recommend. Uh, Rigid is the Home Depot house brand, so these are really easy to come by if you live in the US. If you live outside the US, not so much. Um, we recommend this router because it has a number of features that I really like, and it's sort of a nice middle-of-the-road router. It's not cheesy, but it's not $500. Um, so yeah, let's, let's walk through some of the things that, that I like about this one. So starting from the top of this router and sort of working our way down, um, it has this electronic speed control which lets you uh, adjust the speed of the router. Um, it's really nice, it's its internal closed loop system so it's constantly measuring its speed and correcting. Uh, different speeds are nice for different materials. Uh, also I like to run it really slow just so it's quiet when I'm, when I'm testing things. Um, next nice feature I really like is the on off button is right here on the top. Uh, Basically, you, you pull it out to turn it on, and you can hit it to turn it off. Uh, it's sort of like the, the emergency stop button on, on big equipment. It's very accessible. I like that feature. The depth is very easy to set. You can see right here, it uses a screw along the side. Uh, before I take it apart and mounted this motor, it had a knob, which was very easy to adjust while you're using it. Uh, it's also very easy to attach a motor to. Uh, and it's very solid. Nothing, nothing is loose. Next feature I really like about this is it has dust collection. So you can see it's got this little clear clear window that clips into the front here uh, that encloses it. And then on the bottom, you can see that there's a port that lets you attach a uh, vacuum hose that sucks out your dust. And that's that's really nice. This, uh, this side clasp that lets you set uh, whether the router is held in place or not is nice. It also has a bolt on the end that lets you set how much tension the router is held with, which is really nice. Finally, something I like about this router is it has a light built in. Um, it, it generates its own DC and powers two LEDs that are on the bottom of the router. Hold out and show you those guys. So that's these two, these two little LEDs right here. Um, and that's nice because you can see what you're working on. It could be a little bit dark in there otherwise, and it's nice to be able to see what you're cutting. And finally, it has this plate on the bottom, uh, which the router slides on. It's some sort of hard, fairly smooth plastic. It's held in place with these three bolts, and that is how you attach the router to your sled. Um, Almost all routers have that. It's the same mechanism you would use to attach to a router table. Um, but that, that is the one feature that you have to have. So this is the first router that I used when I was building the prototypes. It's a um, Sears Model 315. I think it belonged to my grandfather or something. I just sort of had it always. Uh, it's not a great choice but it works. And if you already have a router like this, uh, I highly recommend just using it. Uh, there's no reason to buy a new one. Uh, and if you, if you use the one you have, you can get sort of a sense of what you're looking for in a router when you go to buy one. Uh, so let me just go over some of the things that are, are good about this and some of the things that aren't great about it. Um, what's good about this is it has a removable base plate, so you can mount it. Um, it works. Those are, those are sort of the good things. Uh, things that I didn't like so much about this one are the depth adjustment is this knob on the top, which um, you can see I'm just turning it and nothing, nothing is happening. Uh, so it's, it's not great. Uh, also to set the depth, you use this bolt that you tighten on the side, and when you've loosened it, the whole thing is incredibly floppy. Uh, also the on-off switch is a trigger here, which when you have it mounted like this is a little bit hard to reach. Um, there's no dust collection and no speed control. So it's, you know, but it works. At the end of the day, like, this works. So this is a RotoZip saw. It's not actually a router at all. Um, this isn't really something I would recommend for this kind of application. 
but if you're willing to do some fabrication, you could make something like this work. And we're trying to foster a community of people who, you know, are, are here to share ideas and find new uses for their Maslow machines, so um, just wanted to talk about it. Uh, some advantages to this thing, it's got a nice on-off switch right at the top. Um, it's a nice tool, I mean, it cuts, it cuts through wood great. Uh, some drawbacks are it doesn't have a base plate. A router base plate is really meant to slide along the wood, uh, whereas this is clearly not, so you'd have to make that yourself. Uh, it also doesn't really have any depth adjustment. It has this little tiny plate that moves up and down, but that's really not going to work. So you're going to have to come up with some sort of mounting mechanism that moves your, your saw in and out. Uh, if that's the kind of road you want to go down, um, we encourage you to talk about it in the forums and chat with everyone. I think that we're really trying to create a community of people who are sharing ideas. And um, so please join that. So this is the uh, Ryobi router from Home Depot. Um, it doesn't feel that well built. I'm not sure I would recommend it. It is $69 at our Home Depot. Um, okay, so the power switch is on the side here, which is going to be okay. Um, you get the same side adjustment mechanism, which is pretty good, and you get a clasp to lock and unlock it, which is nice because that's adjustable. Um, you also get a, a dust collection system with this one and a quarter inch collet instead of a half inch collet and it has lights again. Um, this plate that it slides on is there, you can use it. Uh, it feels a little bit cheesy also, um, maybe not quite as well built, but this router would work. So this is a Bosch router from Home Depot. Um, to turn it on and off, there's not a switch on the top. It has a trigger on the handle here, so you can push the trigger in and lock it to keep it on. Uh, that would work, but it's a little bit less convenient. Um, it also has a speed control dial up here, and then it uses the same side adjustment mechanism, which would be pretty convenient, and a lock, which is not adjustable in terms of how much force, but that's all right. Um, it also includes LEDs on the bottom, which will light while you're cutting. The plate that it mounts to isn't here on the store model, um, but it, it has the same style of mounting plate, so that would be okay. So this router would work fine. So this is a Porter Cable uh, router, and uh, it's fairly similar. It's got a power switch on the side here. That's good. Uh, something that's going to be an issue with this router is that to raise and lower it, you actually spin the entire router. Um, you could do that if you wanted to, but it's going to be a little bit inconvenient, I think. Uh, I would prefer not to have this style of adjustment. It's going to be very difficult to automate if you wanted to add an automated Z-axis and it, uh, the whole power cable twists with it as well. Other than that, it's fairly similar. Um, it has a, a standard base plate. This one does not have LEDs that light up while you're cutting. And it's not variable speed. So the other category of routers that are out there are these compact routers. And I'm not sure I'd recommend these, but uh, if someone wanted to try one, you know, that would be reasonable. Uh, this is a Makita one. Uh, it has the power switch on the front here, and it has a speed controller up here. Uh, you set the depth with this little mechanism here. And then down here you have your call it and base plate. My biggest concern with these is not actually their power. It would be, is this base plate going to be big enough to give you stable motion as your router slides? And I think the answer is probably no. You would need to make a bigger base plate that would support the router as it slid. So this is a uh, fixed base router from Skill that I actually like quite a bit. Uh, it's not variable speed, but other than that, it has sort of everything you're looking for, and it's a little bit cheaper than the, um, the rigid router. So the, uh, the on-off switch is on the top here, which is super convenient. Uh, you set the depth on the back here. This adjustment would be pretty easy to automate. Um, works quite well. And then, looks like it has a dust collection plate that isn't actually on this one, but would bolt into those two screws. And it has two lights on the bottom to illuminate while you're cutting. We didn't look at every kind of router from every manufacturer, but I think we covered sort of the general um, range of features that are available. Uh, there's also a lot of people asking about things like putting on a plasma cutter um, or some other kind of tool. Uh, we really are trying to make a platform that you can build into whatever you want. Uh, so if you, if you try to go down one of those roads, uh, first of all, be safe, uh, and second of all, let everyone know about it in the forums.